Superman is fun again. Case closed. Why is it so dark in here? Wait, don't look. I'm doing a thing. <laughs> My Adventures with Superman has been a Monday treat. It is by no means the best thing in the world. And going into making this video, I wanted to try and save the hyperbole for something else. This isn't a show where you need to break down the deep underlying themes or political messaging to enjoy it. It's there for sure, but the way I watch this show compared to something like House of the Dragon is very different. And it's just nice. Nice to know that for 22 minutes in my week, I just get to spend time with these characters. It's so joyous. Something that I think that has helped the show tenfold is making these seasons back to back. Unlike Invincible or Arcane, there was no huge two to three year long wait. For 10 weeks, we are here with Clark, Lois and Jimmy and just everyone else. Then before I knew it, we were back for season two. DC for the longest time, though, hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows. As fans of the channel would know lately, it's been, yeah, pretty grim. It's almost this fact alone that I even wanted to make this video. I want to show that there is stuff out there that I am enjoying that is DC related. DC the past decade has been still dealing with the ramifications of the New 52 and Jeff Johns. DC's edge and almost emo feel were everywhere. The largest failure during this era or period was the DCEU, which is a very heavily talked about subject, borderline talk to death here on YouTube. With that though, came the notion that Superman to be cool had to be sad and burdened with guilt. And this comes from a Man of Steel enthusiast, mind you. But this is not the case at all. With all the efforts to have a serious and dark tone as an attempt to be relevant, came a huge wave of irrelevancy as people stopped watching the movies or even considering DC as a competitor to Marvel when it came to movies and TV. Hell, before games like Marvel's Avengers came out and sucked, it even seemed like they could have even taken over the gaming space. And Insomniac really did steal the crown as the top gaming like comic studio from Rocksteady. But now more than ever, it seems that DC and more importantly, Superman are important again. You have this show, which is great. Then you have Superman and Lois, which I seriously need to catch up on. But from what I hear on Twitter and my friends, it's also banging. Then you have James Gunn, who is currently filming his Superman film, set to be released this time next year, beginning the brand new DC Cinematic Universe. Hope is back again. And it is this mindset and feeling that I like to have and to be able to push out to you guys with videos like this. Now, what does my adventures with Superman bring to the table? What does this bring to Superman, a character who's been around for decades? Well, for starters, I just love spending time with all the characters. With only its first two seasons already with Clark, Lois, Jimmy, the Daily Planet, the assortment of villains and one-off characters, all around, it's just something I enjoy spending time taking in. With how long it's been since many of these characters have been done justice on screen. Having a reminder of, yeah, Jimmy is Clark's best friend, the down-to-earth guy who Superman needs. The tone can be serious at times, dealing with stuff that is pretty full-on for our characters. It all lands with the heft it needs and gives weight to when characters are showing off their love for each other. The tone is just always well-managed. When Lois gets a bit more real and honest with Clark, the scenes are often overcast or really well-lit to showcase this is an important moment between them. With this show, the biggest difference from other DC adaptations in the past, like Superman the Animated Series, is the heavy inspiration from anime. When talking to other YouTubers or people about this, we talk about, hey, this does kind of feel like an Americanized shonen, from its structure to a lot of the cliches and so on. And pause, I know what some of you will say. Excuse me, Charles, shonen isn't a genre, it's a publication, or whatever. All I have to say in response is, I know, but come on. When I say, hey, it's akin to a shonen or a battle shonen, like, it's like Naruto or something. You get that image in your head. And for making a video that's like seven minutes, I just gotta get the point across easily. Don't think berserk, think this. It's just this version of Clark really does feel like a reimagining, one who gets his big power up moments and turns blue, granting him new abilities. Overall, the anime vibes are strong with this and I totally dig it. Season two introduces Supergirl to the mix and she is perfect. I adore her. She is very, very different to her normal incarnations of that fish out of water teenager who is lost and scared. Here, she is a lot more confident and dominant in nature. 
It's interesting. Her initial design took very heavy influence from Android 18 from Dragon Ball 2. I think to reflect the similarities in their roles to start off the story. And as time went on in the season, Supergirl really grew to be her own thing in a really, really positive way. Her suit at the end with the scarf also slaps hard, even if Clark's suit ain't all that. Season 2 in a sea of just DC stuff that I wasn't all too happy with starts off what seems to be a run of things for DC that makes me go, hell yeah. When you have this, Kite Man, the new Batman show on Amazon, and Creature Commandos this year, it just gives me some hope that the future is bright for DC in animation. And it's all thanks to our Boy Scout. The finale really is just therapeutic. We have a Superman who doesn't revel in fighting. He's actively trying not to hurt Kara, which makes this entire sequence fun to watch. The animation, as always, is so smooth and pretty, with most of the art direction being so down my alley. And the finale leaves so much room for the series to continue growing its cast and world. I really hope to see more corners of the Superman world get introduced, rather than shoehorning ways to fit in more aspects of Batmans into this. I'm looking at you, Arrow. Lastly, everyone, and I mean everyone, is just so damn hot in this show. That Bachelor episode, the character with the silver hair, oh, she rocks up for a single episode. What the hell? That's without mentioning Lois and Clark themselves. Far out. And everyone is attracted to one another. Anyways, getting distracted. Though there are a few things that I'm not all too hot about. It's been said a million times when talking about this show, but I'm going to say it anyway. Even though I praise the finale for its animation and art direction, when all the characters of the past two seasons pop up to help out, or that epilogue shows villains scheming, whatever it be, the designs for all of them and Brainiac being so tech-based does strip them so much of their uniqueness away. Each one feels way too heavily connected to tech, which just yeah, it isn't as fun as some of them being metahumans or aliens or just different to one another. If Brainiac even had just looked like Brainiac, I don't think I would have minded half as much. Even Superman's new suit looks techy with how bulky the shoulders are. I know this has to stand apart from everything else they've already done before with the character. It's just a simple side-by-side -side showing the amount of distinction each character has lost. When it's all this exact same design language for each character, it's just kind of a bummer to me. And for things I don't gel with now that season two is over and the evil Kryptonians arc is done, can we drop the evil Superman multiverse stuff? Just, yeah, don't really need more of that. It's been done in every single adaptation. I just don't want to see that moving forward. I really do think it is important to have shows like My Adventures with Superman. It has been far too long without a show about the Man of Steel in animation. I honestly think for a lot of the main characters of DC, having a mainline animated show that is on the air is almost a necessity. Batman has nearly had three decades of that and lately he hasn't had that and so it's felt so darn horrible. I grew up during the 2000s, so I had like five to six shows to choose from. Kids grow up first with these types of shows, and then they move on to the more mature shit with like The Dark Knight or the older animated works with the hope they pick up some comics. To think characters like Superman haven't had an animated show since the 90s, and then Wonder Woman has never had one. That is diabolical. Though I do hear she might be getting an anime connected to James Gunn's DCU, which could be insane, and fingers crossed for your photo to have time to do that. How have you guys been feeling about DC lately? I know I've been a bit negative lately, but I literally made this video to talk about the positive stuff that I've seen. Other than that, I just have to thank my patrons. In the top mate tier, we have Nick. In the great mate tier, we have Colin and CJ. And for the good mate tier, we have Jadu Sable. If you are interested in some of the perks we offer, please make sure to follow the link in the description. You get to see videos early, among other great things. Anyways, thank you for watching today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.